All right, so in this video, I wanted to do something a little different, which is answer some of the community members' questions regarding the ChatGPT and Go High Level booking bot system. So if you're totally new to Go High Level and ChatGPT, you're gonna wanna go back a few videos on my channel to get caught up to speed. But basically, what this system does is allows your customers, if you own a marketing agency, or if you have a business that you're running on Go High Level, it basically allows you to automatically qualify your leads and follow up with your leads using ChatGPT and Go High Level. So if you're wondering what this system looks like. It's basically a combination of different workflows that I created and these workflows basically respond to your leads and they can do it can do this on SMS, on Facebook and Instagram DMs. And so people have questions about this that have either purchased it for me or built it themselves off of the videos that I've made. And so in this video I want to answer this question and uh, you know, hopefully integrate a few more of these types of videos to the channel. That way you guys can ask questions here in the group and get value and yeah, just learn more about how you can use this stuff. So basically the way that the system is designed out of the box is when a customer sends a text message, right? And this is the SMS version of the system. So when a customer sends a text, we basically, you can kind of ignore all these. I mean, these are just, you know, updating fields and making sure everything's good to pass through the bot again. But really the core function of the system is a customer will reply, we send a webhook to Zapier, and then from there, that webhook basically sends a prompt to ChatGPT, and then ChatGPT produces a response, and we pull that response and change a contact field. And then when that contact field gets changed, you can ignore kind of all this, we send a text, right? And that text basically is the field that we've changed, and that's really how it works. Now, there's more to it. You can check out other videos, but to answer this question, right, um, Connie wants to know how he can limit the follow-up message from the bot to be two times, only after it's waiting for a reply, but no but to also know not to follow up if a lead gave a negative reply. So out of the box, once you kind of see how it works, customer replies, we send a webhook, webhook sends a prompt to ChatGPT, changes the field, and we send that changed field to via a text. So what he wants to know is how do we change this part of the system because out of the box, the system will basically follow up with leads forever. And the reason that it does that is because once a lead gets a text message, we have this wait condition. And this wait condition is waiting for a contact reply. And so if the contact does reply, we take that message or we take that user and basically, you know, re-clear all the fields, send a webhook, and then um, ChatGPT responds to the most recent message. But what Connie wants to know about is how do we kind of adjust the part of the system where if the contact does not reply, right, which would mean the, the contact will go down this path, how do we limit the system from not just continuously following up with the lead by one, uh, it sounds like wanting to limit the number of messages sent and then also knowing not to follow up if the lead gave a negative reply. So I'm gonna basically build this with you guys here, take you through my thought process, and then um, you know you guys can implement this. So the first step, right, is to basically, let me, let me actually close my window because I'm the, the window's open, but everyone can hear me, hold on. All right, so basically the first thing to kind of look at is where, where would we start, what do we want, right? Being really, really clear about what you want is like number one, right? But I'm kind of taking what he's saying in the post and just kind of, assuming that's exactly what somebody wants, right? So really where the, the adjustment is gonna need to be made is gonna be on this side of the workflow. So the first thing I do whenever I'm testing things is I, I build a copy, right, of the original. Because if you start messing with this and then you forget how it was before and then it just becomes a whole thing. So um, I would just duplicate this workflow, first of all. That way I can do whatever I want and you know mess it up and then just go back to, to the original if I can't figure it out or you know I don't, I don't end up wanting to do it. So. The first thing is we want, we know what we want, which is to limit the number of messages sent to two. So let's just start by doing that. So we're not gonna really make any adjustments to the customer reply part of the workflow because we still want the bot to continue to work if the customer does reply, right? If we mess with this, right, um, and mess with this part of the system, then, you know, the customer, when the customer does reply, it's not gonna like, the bot won't respond, right? Which defeats the entire purpose. So what we need to do is make an adjustment first here because when a lead, I can pretty much uh, demonstrate this like live. So if I take this contact here and I start the bot for this lead, for the SMS part of the snapshot, it's gonna send a message over here that says, hi, I noticed Go High Level's been slow, very slow today and slow lately, but basically there's gonna be a one in the queue over here on this copy, okay? Now this is the one that's on, right? But I can go into you know this one and basically 
the lead is in this uh, you know part of the the wait step on the other workflow. Okay, um, but basically what happens is when you click on this contact and you force the lead through the workflow, that's assuming the contact doesn't reply because if they reply, they go over here and then the bot works again. But if they don't reply, right, it's going to send the webhook and then just never stop. So what he wants to do is basically delete this, right? And then what we're going to do here is basically we're going to send the follow up message because. He wants to limit this to two. So we're basically gonna you know, create two follow-up messages. So the simplest way that I figured out to do this is add a plus here. And then what we can do is we can just use the native chat GPT function from Go High Level. And the reason being is because the way I created this snapshot is when a message gets sent from the actual bot or the user, we have a user field that we can pull um, as data. And so since we have access to that data, we can just reference it and then tell it to generate a new response. So I can write something like mandatory 160 characters or less, right? That way it sends a short message to the actual lead. And then I can say, um, you are following up with, and then we can pull the contact's name, right? If you don't have the contact's name or something like that, just remove this, but you are following up with this, uh, contact. And then you would say, um, they did not respond to your last text message that you sent. Please generate a new variation of the previous message that you sent. And then I can say, here is the previous message you sent. And then I'm gonna put a colon and just basically put the quotes. And inside of my snapshot, I can just pull this uh, chat GPT assistant response message. And we can just end the quote here. And the reason being I can pull that data is because the way I've designed the system is to clear the field, update the field so that everything is basically, you know, current, right? So everything basically is um, tracked from the last GPT assistant response message. So we have all that already stored. So now what it's going to do is it's going to send the prompt to chat GPT, right? And get a response. And so then what we want to do is we want to send that. Uh, response or first what to keep the you know the consistency of the system we want to clear right once this um, response gets generated we want to now clear that GPT assistant response message and then we're going to update that response message again with the new excuse me not that one with the new value that was generated here because that way in the next prompt if we want to do five follow-up messages it'll build on the previous one so it's always current so we're going to do the same thing we're going to do this and then we're going to update this based on chat GPT response one. And now what we've done is, you know, the, the bot is engaged, the lead doesn't respond. So it goes down here, clears all the data. Then we send a new prompt, right? We clear that previous value. That way we can update it with the most current value, which was generated here. And then from there, we're gonna do SMS. And then we're gonna basically pull this value from chat GPT internally, and then basically save, right? And so then if I wanted to limit this to two different responses, right, or um, two total follow ups, right, I could do. So what he wants to do is wait and, and run a condition. So what you can do is wait for a reply, which would be to this text. And then it sounds like he wants to run a condition. So if the uh, customer replied positively, right, um, we can do intent type and then just do is uh, positive, right? then we're going to continue uh, following up with them, right? So really though, you wouldn't necessarily need to create any sort of action here because if you, if you pre-program something down this side of the branch, it's not going to let the bot work, right? So we really need to, um, you know, think about, right, how we want to design it because this is how you're going to create the follow-up sequence. And so, you know, you just do it internally here. Now we're waiting for a reply. Now, if the customer replied positively, we don't want another follow-up message because it's going to be out of context. We just want when the lead comes here, them to pass through back into the customer replied and then the, the thing just keeps going, right? So if you, um, you would probably need to define, um, you know, two different things. So you would have customer replied positively and then you would have customer replied negatively, right? And then we'll do contact reply and 10 type is negative, right? And you could potentially, you may need to put more keywords here. I'm just showing you the basic building blocks. And so if they reply negatively, right, you could remove from all workflows, you know, you could do uh, DND, right? This is just kind of illustrating, right? Like what you can do here. So you have customer replied positively, which would just let them exit and then the bot does its thing. And then you would have, they don't respond, right? They don't respond to this, um, you know, this, this follow-up condition, right? And you could either leave it as just the, you know, the, the empty branch, and then you could duplicate the same exact thing from right here. So you would just copy this entire thing, 
So copy all and then go down here. And we're gonna need to edit some of this, but same thing. So what we're doing, let me break it down real quick. So it looks, it looks complicated, but we sent a message to the user, right? The user did not respond. And there's no positive intent in this original thing here. If you wanted to create that type intent type, you would just move this, you know, to right there, right? But basically there's no intent type. It's just if they respond, they get taken back to the bot. If they don't respond, we just update all the right fields. And then we generate, right, this new message to the user. We update that field for the user and then we send that message to the actual user from here. Okay, then we're waiting, right, until the contact reply. We probably wanna put a timeout period so that you could just consider this the, the follow-up period. So if you wanted to do three days after this you know, message, if they, if they time out, then it's gonna go down here, assuming they didn't respond. Because this is, they respond positively, this is they respond negatively, and then this is basically any other condition, which would mean they didn't respond. So they, the field would get uh, cleared, that way we update the last source that the message was sent from, in case you wanna use my snapshot with Facebook or Instagram, we clear the user response field, we update that, and then we send a prompt to ChatGBT. So this is number two, and all this can stay the exact same because this was this contact GBT assistant response message was updated, cleared here, and then updated. So all we need to do now, uh, though now is change this one from the first GPT generated response, and then choose the second one, and then save. And then we also need to change the SMS here to the second one, and then um, save that. Oops, that was the first one. So there you go. So I can now demo this for you guys and show you how it works. So like I said, Go High Level has been slow today. So let's go to um, this one here. So this was the original one that I had kind of built just to kind of test the, the function of it. And then now we have this, um, you know, this one here, which is the new, the new version that I just kind of made with you guys. So these can be off and the, the workflow will work. So when I start this bot uh, for this user, um, we're gonna just remove the contact from this one and then we're just gonna start the SMS system. So we're gonna see a one, it's gonna resend this message, hi, it's gonna show up there, boom. And then when we go to this automation, we're gonna see a one here in the new one we made and now we're in the wait stage. So when we push this contact to force the contact to go through, it's gonna basically send that prompt and then it's gonna, you know, basically by the time I force the contact, we will see the new message in this other sub account, which is where I'm, you know, getting the response from. And then we're gonna be down here. So let me pull up this message here. Cool. So I'm gonna basically force this contact and this would simulate the contact not responding. And by the time we refresh it, if high level's not slow, we're gonna be down here and I should have gotten a response in just a few seconds. So it's running the workflow, it's running the condition, it's taking the uh, prompt here. And since the original message was high, um, it's just gonna basically probably generate a response off of, off of this uh, high step that the, see? So um, there you go. So now we're down here. When we refresh this, we will be down here. And there we are. And then if I force the contact through again as well, the contact did not respond. So it's just gonna generate another variation of this last message. And obviously once the bot is working and it's actually generating its own responses, this response will get you know more precise with where the lead actually left off within the system. So you can see some of them that I was testing before here. So the reason it's kind of generating a generalized response is because the previous message that was sent was just high and that's stored here. So if we you know adjusted that value, so I can actually show you that. So if I adjust this value here, you're gonna see just the, the last message it sent. So there it is. So if I change that though, that's gonna re-trigger the, the workflow. So I'm just gonna basically uh, force the contact through and then show you and hopefully that helps everyone. So if I uh, push the contact through, I'm gonna go down the right side. So if I go here, push, then we're gonna get another follow-up message here. Um, you know, that's a variation of this and there you go. And that's how you can limit it because you can basically just duplicate this 10 times and then, you know, the bot will never just re-trigger. So, yeah, hopefully that helps. Let me know if you guys like these types of videos where I'm answering your guys' questions and uh, building stuff with you guys. Let me know. See you in the next video. All right, peace.